The Warring States period, about 500 to 200 BCE, was a wild and disorienting time in what is now China. And that's why I'm using these contemporary images from Kong Ki retelling Warring States stories in a kind of disjointed cyberpunk idiom. Check it out. In addition to political fragmentation and endless infighting, the intellectual world, from politics to morals, was also disjointed. Everything, it seemed, was up for grabs, and the ideas of all of these competing itinerant philosophers could actually be tested out in the laboratories of the many fighting states. I want to share with you today the words of one very famous man, Han Fei, who we would now call a legalist thinker. He lived around 280 to 233 BCE and was genuinely brilliant, influenced by Confucians, Taoists, and others. But here he makes the argument that everything his contemporaries thought about morality was wrong and the world had it backwards. So six examples of having it backwards. The sort of person who had a fear of death, avoids trouble and surrenders or retreats is honored by the world as a man who values life. The sort of person who studies the way and proposes plans, but distances himself from the law, is honored by the world as a man of learning. The sort of person who travels around letting others support him is honored by the world as a man of talent. The sort of person who twists words, pretends to have knowledge, and practices deception, the world honors as a skilled debater. The sort of person who wields a sword to kill or intimidate is honored by the world as a man of courage. The sort of person who deserves to die because he has harbored criminals is honored by the world as a man of chivalry. The world praises these six sorts of people. By contrast, the sort of person who will risk his life for matters of principle, the world belittles as a person who cannot calculate the odds. The sort of person who knows little but obeys the law, the world belittles as a simple rustic. The sort of person who does productive work, feeding himself through his own efforts, the world belittles as a fellow of little ability. The sort of person who is generous, honest, and good, the world belittles as silly. The sort of person who obeys orders and respects authority, the world belittles as timid. The sort of person who resists criminals and informs the authorities about them, the world belittles as a slanderer. The world belittles these six sorts of people. The six sorts who plot, deceive, and do nothing of value, the world honors. The six sorts who farm, wage war, and prove of use, the world disparages. These are the six examples of having it backwards. Ordinary people, out of partiality, praise someone. Then the ruler, hearing of this undeserved reputation, treats him with courtesy. Those who are treated courteously always end up gaining profit as well. Ordinary people, because of a private grudge, slander someone. Then the ruler, following convention, despises him. Those who are despised always come to harm. Thus, rewards go to the selfish and evil people who ought to be punished, and harm comes to the public-minded men who ought to be rewarded. Consequently, there is no hope of enriching and strengthening the state. And here is one of the most famous phrases, both beautiful and very terrifying in implications. The ancients had a saying, Governing is like washing hair. Even if some hairs fall out, it must be done. Anyone who begrudges the loss of some hair and forgets the advantage to the growing hair has no understanding of expediency. Lancing boils hurts. Drinking medicine tastes bitter. But if on that account one does not lance them or drink them, one will not recover. Now, the relationship between superior and subordinate is not based on affection like that between father and son. So if one wishes to curb subordinates by acting righteously, the relationship will be flawed. Think of parents' relation to their children. They congratulate each other when a son is born, but complain to each other when a daughter is born. Why do parents have these divergent responses when both are equally their offspring? It is because they calculate their long-term advantage. Since even parents deal with their children in this calculating way, what can one expect where there are no parent-child bonds? When present-day scholars counsel rulers, they all tell them to rid themselves of thoughts of profit and follow the path of mutual love. This is expecting rulers to go further than parents. These are immature ideas, false and deceptive. The intelligent ruler, therefore, does not accept them. 
The sagest method of governing is as follows. He scrutinizes the laws and prohibitions, and once they are made clear, his officials are orderly. He defines the rewards and punishments, and when they are fair, the people can be employed by the officials. When the officials are orderly and the people are employed, the state will get rich, and from that the army will be strong. Then it is possible to succeed in establishing hegemony over other states. For rulers, becoming hegemon or king is the ultimate benefit. A ruler must keep this ultimate benefit in mind in governing. Therefore, he must employ officials according to their talents and give rewards and punishments impartially so that all can see. When men work hard and risk their lives, military campaigns can succeed and rewards of rank and salary are deserved. Thus, one succeeds in gaining wealth and high rank. For subjects, wealth and high rank are the ultimate benefit. When subjects attend to their work with these goals in mind, they will face danger and risk their lives, putting out every last bit of effort. This is what is meant by the saying that unless the ruler is generous and the subjects loyal, hegemony cannot be achieved. He is, in other words, laying out what is basically a kind of amoral, anti-family values position here, totally antithetical and really disparaging of the Confucians and others of his day. It's not love or righteousness, but it is rewards and punishments for Han Fei. He goes on with an example about criminals where he says, even if people are horrible, but they know that the punishments are severe, you could leave gold out in the marketplace. Conversely, in a situation where there aren't heavy punishments, he says, when a robbery happens, even very upright people will fall under suspicion because no one knows for sure. He goes on. The relationship between officials and the people is not based on love, and their orders are 10,000 times more effective than parents. Parents pile up love, but their orders fail. Officials are strict and people obey. Such is the basis for choosing between severity and love. Furthermore, Parents make every effort to keep their children safe and far from trouble, but a ruler's relation to his people is different. In times of difficulty, he needs them to risk death, and in times of peace, he needs them to exhaust their strength for him. Parents, who lovingly consider their children's comfort and benefit, are not obeyed. Rulers, with no concern for their benefit, demand that they risk their lives or work hard, have their orders followed. The intelligent ruler recognizes this, and so does not cultivate feelings of empathy, but builds up awe for his power. And in the end, it was this vision or some version of it that became the founding philosophy of the state of Qin that first unified the empire. Han Fei, if not an architect, was very much an inspiration for that vision. What would Han Fei have thought of the ultimate victory of his philosophy? We can't say for sure, and he didn't live to see it fully, because he was a victim of the system that he helped inspire. He fell victim to the harsh punishments and unforgiving nature of the Qin state and was forced to commit suicide. The Qin state would go on without him and use all of its power and punishments to try and order the world. That it did not long outlive him, crashing down only about a dozen years later, does not diminish the way these ideas and practices have echoed down the ages, forming a part of China's political culture and institutional DNA ever since.